Hey there, Thrill Seekers. This is Eric the Pug, and I have my shades on today because I'm going to show you how to change a shader graph shader's properties by script in Unity. So let's get to work. Okay, so we are starting off with a universal render pipeline project. So there are two parts to this. First, the shader. Um, let's go ahead and add a cube or something to our scene so that we have something to look at. I'm gonna check the camera, move the camera however you like. Right? We have a little camera preview. Cool. So we have this cube. Right now it's using the default material. We'll change that in a second. You want to stay organized so make a shaders folder we're going to go into the shaders folder that you just made we're going to create a shader and i'm going to pick blank shader graph and i'm going to name this uh shader example and we're going to go ahead open the shader editor and it, you'll see let me pop this out all right so we're going into the graph settings your graph inspectors graph settings and you're going to go into active targets hit plus and select universal because we're in universal render pipeline right now it's going to fill out your vertex and your fragment part um for this example, what we're going to be doing is the simplest thing I can imagine, which is changing the color of the shader from red to blue. Uh, so we're going to need two colors. We're going to hit right click, create node. I'm going to type in color and grab basic color. All right, I'm going to need a second color, so I'm going to copy and paste this. So now we'll have two colors. I'm going to click this black rectangle. I'm going to select red. I'm going to go down here, select that black rectangle. I'm going to select blue in the picker. So now we have two. Uh, we have two colors. We're going to want to blend between two colors. So I'm going to create a blend node. Blend. Boom. Okay. We're going to route the red into the top pin. And we're going to route the blue into the second pin. And then we're going to right route the out to the base color right here and you can see in the preview once the preview catches up to this blazingly fast tutorial that will show as one of the colors uh, in the blend overlay is selected as our blend mode what we're going to want is we're going to want linear light and that's what's going to, basically, we're going to linearly blend between these two colors. Uh, the blend amount right now, you can see it's giving us all blue and no red. And so the opacity of the, is the value that we're going to change with our script. What we need to do is create a property. We go over here to this thing, they refer, they call it the blackboard because whatever uh go up here hit this plus you're going to add a float i'm going to name this uh blend amount and that screaming that you're hearing is coming from people who want all shader properties to be named with an underscore in the front because that's the convention. 
but we're defying convention today. Maybe I want eight clicks. I don't know. Anyway, we're going to drag our new property out. And we're going to hook it up to this opacity pin right here. Bing. And so now we have this property. The shader now has a property. Select, the, select it. And you can see the node setting. You can see it's already exposed right here in the graph inspector. You can see it's an exposed property. And when we change this value, we change it, what we're going to end up with is different colors, right? So easy. I'm going to set the default to be 0.5. So it starts out kind of purple. Um, okay. I have to ever, all right. Okay. This is probably the most important point in the, the most important point of this video, I think, is to control a property by script. Do you see this reference? You have the name up here, right? But this reference is exceedingly important. Copy your name and paste it in to the reference, okay? If you do not do this, your script will not work and Unity will not throw you an error message or a warning and you will have no idea why your script is unable to adjust your shader's properties. And unless you knew that this was the problem. Also, for some reason, the tutorials on, and the forums online do not emphasize this fact. But let me save you a whole bunch of grief by re-emphasizing setting that reference. Okay? So, yeah, I'm going to hit save. I think we're done. We have linear light. We have our reference set. We have our blend between red and blue. Okay. Uh, hit save. Uh, all we have to do now is we're going to, I'm going to right click on the shader that we just made and I'm going to hit create material. So now we have, uh, now we are going to have, now we're going to have our Example material. I'm going to drag it and put it into the materials folder to stay organized. Yes, I did this one one take before. Um, I'm going to grab this material and drop it on our cube with the normal cube stuff. And if you look into the material, we have our adjustable value here and we can switch between red and blue. Awesome. We're halfway there. Okay, so part two is writing the actual script that changes the value. Um, first thing we're going to need is a reference to that material. Uh, We are also going to need um, the name of that property. The property that we're, we just created on the, on the shader. So we're going to need that. Uh, we are going to be changing the value from like zero and we're going to be over time changing it to one and then back again so that the cube is going to change from blue to red then back. Um, so we're going to need a high and a low value. Um, we're going to need that. We're going to need... Um, 
we're blending this the color <clears throat> um we're gonna need to blend the colors over time so we're gonna need a speed uh we're my plan is to put this in the update so that's every frame we want to change this value very slowly How slowly? Very slowly. Uh, we can always crank it up later if we wanted. Um, also, uh, to do this over time, we're going to need to keep um, track of the current value of the mixed color. Uh, yeah, so... Um, Now there's a, a lot of really good and clever ways of changing a value over time and this is going to just be the simplest way possible because that's not the important part of the example. The important part of this script is taking this material and then we're going to First thing we're going to do in update is we're going to set that blend value set float and we're going to set that float to be our mix value. Right there, that's, that's the part of the script that does the business. Uh, the rest of this is just changing that value over time. And we're not just changing it over time, but we're also going to kind of ping pong between zero and one. So if this value gets over one, we want to reverse the direction so the value goes back down to zero. I am going to do this this way. If the mix value is greater than the high value that we set earlier, or if the mix value is less than the lower limit that we set. Then we are going to change the speed to be the multiplicative inverse. There we go. Eyeball this for correctness. I believe that's it. All right, so that's the script. Now we just fill in the values. Uh, we are going to grab grab your uh, grab a reference to your material out of your material folder. Bam! Right, we have all of that all of that stuff from our script right here. Blend material, material example. The property name is right here. Blend amount. I just want to put two M's in there. There we go. Blend amount. And hit save. And if I am not mistaken, I believe that's it. There we go. All right, great. So it works. Uh, I just want to re-emphasize setting that reference value in shader graph because Unity will not give you any kind of warning or error telling you that that's what's wrong with your, 
with your setup. Um, my name's Eric the Pug. I hope this helps someone out there. Um, like and subscribe and keep your dick in a vice.